Hello everyone, today we are doing a review of E-Rank or Etsy Rank. I don't think I'm ever gonna get used to not calling it Etsy Rank. Um, so, I have really bad hay fever guys, so I apologize if I sound a bit raspy or I pause to cough or sneeze or something like that. But I just really wanted to, wanted to get this video done and out because I know a lot of you guys out there struggle with Etsy SEO and for the right reasons too because it is a, it, it can be a little bit of a nightmare as long as you follow a set of golden rules if you like the only thing you can do to improve your SEO over time is experiment and sort of teach yourself what works for your shop and this tool is something that I use most days um, as you can see I have the pro version um, but it is definitely something that I use genuinely most days so that I have the best chance of finding keywords that rank. Um, and I will show you how I use E-Rank at the end. But first of all, I'm just gonna show you like a little tour of what the pro version is like. Now it's $9.99, which in the UK, what does that come out to? That would help if I had to put pounds, wouldn't it? If you guys are in the UK, it's, at the minute, it's £7.94 a month. So I think it's 100% worth it. I've used other uh, Etsy SEO tools before that are a little bit more expensive. And I just find that the other tools on this uh, platform, it's just a lot better. Um, I found the other ones quite confusing and I didn't really find value in the other uh, sort of metrics that they showed you. But I can do videos testing them if you want me to, absolutely, just leave a comment below. So, as you can see, on you do get a free version. Um, the standard features are, I believe, a couple of keyword tools and things like that. You can monitor only one keyword on the free plan, whereas on here you can do 20. Um, and you get all of these tools as well, so Keyword Explorer, uh, Trending on Etsy, uh, monitor keywords, bulk keyword tool, best sellers, ratings and feedback, sales history, keyword pro, key, bleh, keyword tool pro, bulk rank checker, listing audit pro, tag report pro, delivery status report and competition tracker. I like this. Um, I'm all about, you know, keeping, keeping your foot in the door and sort of getting an idea of what's going on out there in your industry. Now, I'm not a fan of competition per se, because at the end of the day, we're all contributing to the particular niche that you're in. We're not competing. I, I don't, I'm not really sure how I feel about that word, but we are contributing, if you like. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I like this feature because when you're having a bit of a <laughs> slow sales day, it's kind of nice to go on there and just have a look and see, is it just me or is it, is it other shops as well? So without further ado, we're gonna get right into it. So we're gonna go on the dashboard. It might be a little bit slow to load. Oh no, we're doing okay so far. So straight off the bat, um, here is your dashboard. Now it gives you how many sales you've had, your feedback score, active listings, spelling issues. Now, if you click this, it actually goes and it's a fabulous tool. And it basically it gives you um, where it thinks that you might have misspelled your tags, which does really, really affect your SEO. So I've got a couple of experimental tags. So I, if you've ever been in, your, uh, in a particular listing stats, you can sometimes find that there is uh, words from a different language being used to find your product. And what I've done is that I've actually put those in some listing to try and experiment to see whether or not it increases the rank or not. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. <laughs> so yeah, and see so here I used uh, I used that word there, that word there, that word there. Um, I'm kind of ashamed actually how many spelling mistakes I have, but anywho, <laughs> um, it may also pick up um, things like this. So I've got chakra and necklaces. It may pick up things like that. It also gives you handy little suggestions and you can click the ignore button if you want. This is dead handy too, because you can click that, go straight to the listing, fix the uh, spelling issue, and then click check again, and then it refreshes the page. So it's really, really fantastic. So we've gone straight onto the tools tab. I'm gonna go onto shop tab and listings. Uh, no, rather, I'm gonna go back to that. That would be a more sensible idea, wouldn't it? So that's just your dashboard. It shows you missing attributes, inventory value, 
and it gives you like a nice little li little encouragement here. Um, down the right hand side, it's got um, most sales across all of Etsy yesterday. Um, Etsy reach as well, so it sort of gives you a little bit more. There we go. Uh, percentage of internet users who visit Etsy.com. So it kind of gives you a little insight as to how Etsy as a whole is doing. This is really handy. Uh, it's got a holiday calendar. So you can essentially um, click on this. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna show you ever so quickly. And it gives you like a really good, see look, how amazing is this? How fantastic is this? If you are, I mean, like me, I mean, I, I don't utilize holidays as much as I should. And I know that I'm just uberly busy and, you know, it's often something that I just miss. But if you scroll and you scroll and you scroll, it gives you, here we go, it gives you, so Canada Day, I could have done jewellery for that a month and a half ago. Independence Day, the same thing. Um, Bastille Day. There's just so many um, sort of little, little holidays and things that you can utilise. Also, is that uh, down, down here, it does give you sort of the, the, the top Etsy search terms uh, based on last year so so help, helpful um, it gives you up and coming events for the next few months uh, you can also click on these to go straight to them also as well just another thing is that um, you can utilize these holidays on social media so for example I saw up here where's friends day oh, I swear I saw it somewhere International Friendship Day. You know, you could do a post on social media. Hi guys, tag tag your two best friends. Da, da, da. Let's show you some appreciation for them. You know, you could really do a really engaging social media post, and it's just another 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 way to kind of stay on the ball. Um, and yeah, essentially, just just be sure that you are at least I'd say at least six weeks to two months ahead. Um, if you're wanting to keyword products, uh, because obviously it does take a while for Etsy to rank, rank you. Um, but definitely make sure you are early for the game. If you are doing something, so for example, Halloween, definitely start uh, making products. Uh, well, uh, da -da -da, that I would start planning your products now for, Hall for Halloween. I would start getting them photographed, all that lot in beginning of August, get them listed by the end of August. So you've got a good couple of months free before Halloween. That's how I tend to do it. I've got a nice little sort of setup where I remind myself on my uh, Evernote calendar to, okay, this is the day that you have to get planning, da, 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 all those types of things. Every year I always swear I'm gonna do more for Halloween and things like that, but I just never get around to it. I need to really just stop um, being so busy and actually focus on things like this, but anyway. So uh, let's go back to here. You've also got sales compa comparison on your competition page. Now I will show you this more in depth later on. But basically, this dashboard page, it's got, you've got a wealth of information just on the first page. So you can see now why I absolutely love Etsy Rank. Also up here is where you do have the little popular keyword tool, which I use all the time, and I'll show you that in a second. So shop tab, listings. I don't tend to use this tab very much. Um, the, the, that, that tab, the shop tab, is a really fantastic way to really get to grips of how your shop is doing, what's working, what's not. Um, I've been in the game for a little while now, so I sort of get a really good idea um, as to what's working and what's not. But see, the upside of this is that on Etsy, on your stats, it only actually shows you uh, for the last 30 days. Um, you know, like, so if you go into your um, listings uh, section on Etsy, it only actually shows you the last 30 days of visits. Whereas this here, at a glance, gives you the total views and visits and things, and the, and the, the tag count and image counts as well. And it gives you a score as well. Let, let me just hover over that so you can see. The, vis the, the visibility score is a measurement of how well your listings daily views compared to listings from thousands of other Etsy shops. So really you can kind of gain a, a physical number as to how your listing is doing compared to others. The conversion rate is mighty, mighty handy because what I do is I do that. Are you gonna work for me? Are you gonna work? There we go. 
and I essentially go through, I mean, these are add-ons. Um, the conversion rate will naturally be higher because I drive traffic to them when people say, oh, can I add an initial and things like that. But see here, this is a brand new listing, okay? Um, it's doing very, very well. Um, total views, da, da, da. so although the views are low, the conversion rate is at 10%. So 10 out of every 100 customers that go into this listing, buy it. Um, you can also click here as well for SEO suggestions. I wouldn't change anything that you've just listed or that's doing really, really well. Um, and this gives you a listing audit here. Now, I will just go quickly go through the listing audits. I don't personally use them because I know a couple of other Etsy tools out there that also do listing audits and they give you SEO grades. I would always say don't take any notice of the grades because at the end of the day, it's an automated thing. It's not someone sat there going, okay, let's grade you A on pictures, B on, on titles, C on descriptions. So I, they give you recommendations and that's okay. But I would always say it tests what's working for your shop. So it sort of gives you a little bit of, you know, sort of more insight as to what Etsy does on this particular listing. Um, so it gives you sort of a shorter title, maybe something like that, uh, best practice for Etsy titles. They, they more or less cite what Etsy has said and gives you uh, longer um, explanations. Um, so it's mighty handy. Um, again, though, I, I tried, I, I, I took what Erank said and I tried the shorter titles. It just didn't work for me. So I don't know if maybe it's a, you know, it's a, it's a thing that's in the works for Etsy, if you like. Um, but what they're saying here is true. Putting your most important keywords first makes it easy for shoppers to see what you're selling at a glance and may result in more clicks and sales from a search, which could improve your sales ranking over, sorry, your search ranking over time. So what they mean by that is basically each listing has a score, okay? So basically, um, when you first list your listing, Etsy watches it quite closely. I don't know sort of if, if, it's, if it's a day, if it's 10 days, a week, 30 days, I don't know. But they watch it very, very closely for the first you know, specific amount, amount of time, let's say, while the listing is still new. And if it's getting lots of traction, clicks, interest, it will gradually go up on the search results. Now, the biggest thing that makes it jump is conversion rate. So if your listing has a very high conversion rate, so going back to the one that I just showed you, the, the one that I said was a message card and it was quite new, I bet if I was to do a search for that keyword now, it would come up on page one because it's basically, it's con the, the, the conversion rate is going very, very well. Uh, Etsy obviously sees that their shoppers are interested in it and, it and it naturally, because it wants to bring you more sales, it wants to make more sales itself, it puts it higher up in the search. So I understand what you guys are saying about SEO and it's important and oh gosh, yes, it is important, but the most important overall metric I would say that I've seen in my shop especially is conversion rate. You might also have seen this, so for example, if you have something, let's say, that has been listed for, let's say, 14 days, okay, and then all of a sudden you get a sale and you're like, oh wow, fantastic, and then a couple of hours or even 20, 24 hours later, you get another sale and you're thinking, okay, this, this is a bit odd. I've had this happen to me so many times and it's it, it can often be things that I haven't, I haven't you know, it was things that, were about to go into my draft section, i.e. they were online for the, for the, on Etsy rather, for the full four months. They're about to expire. I was ready to go in there and rejig the SEO and then it, it sells. And then it sells again and again and again. And I end up having to quickly go and order some more supplies because, you know, I, I've sort of forgotten about it and it's just gone down in, 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 my, in my mental list, if you like. But yeah, it, it's, it's really, really strange. So it definitely does prove that the overall metric is conversion rate or what Etsy calls it. it. It takes into account conversion rate, favorites, interaction. It's called an overall listing quality score or just a listing score. So I hope that helps you. But SEO is, is obviously a very important side of things, um, which it does go through here. So it gives you a nice little tag count. Obviously guys, if, if you're out there and you've, you've got a list and it's only got nine tags, 10 tags, just make sure you use all your tags because these are nice little spaces that Etsy gives you to be ranked. 
So as you can see, um, I in my listings now, as you can see, I use I use a mix of high competition keywords. High and get, I, you can see I, I use a mixture. So where it's got these high competition keywords here, these aren't ones that I found on E-Rank. These are ones that I've actually gone into similar listings. So this is, again, a fantastic thing you can do. Guys, you have access to liquid gold in your Etsy shops, and I don't think a lot of you out there know. But if, you've, if you're selling a similar product, or if you're about to list a similar product, so I am listing a maid of honor, so the, the item is this here, it's a little maid of honor uh, proposal card. If I, if I had a previous, well, which I know for a fact I do, I have previous items in my shop that are catered to this sort of audience, so they're a maid of honor proposal gift as well. Before I list the item, I go into the stats and I look and see what keywords in those listings have brought me traffic. And this, these key, these keywords are keywords that have brought me traffic from other listings. So it almost sort of, it you are you're giving yourself the best chances of being ranked for those keywords. These keywords here, with the less competition, are, are keywords that I found on E Rank, and I will show you how I do that now. Um, well, no, I won't show you now. I'll do that in the tools bit. Sorry, I thought I thought it was further up here. Never mind. So just quickly, the best sellers are um, the ones that have sold the, the most. I personally don't really use this tab because I find it goes it goes all the way back to you know what you first begun to sell. Um, so yeah, not really useful to me, but you guys are very handy dandy if you want to like make more products and you're not sure what sold before, um, rather than scrolling through all the way back on your Etsy sales, you can just go on that tab. So now we're on the draft li listings tab. Mighty handy, gives you uh, like a nice little ready reckoner uh, to check uh, missing images and tags and other missed opportunities. So you can at a glance sort of see, okay, da, 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 and it's mighty handy. See, if you're out there guys, I've experimented you see with lots of different titles so shorter titles here really long titles here I'm experimenting in my shop all the time and it's exactly what you guys need to do because what's working for my shop might not work for yours so tag report now this is really handy too because you can actually use this little bit here to analyze your competitors tags also so if I enter a shop name or select a, a you know, a shop here for my uh, competitors, I can analyze their shops also. But this kind of gives you a nice little com uh, competition, <laughs> a nice little, uh, again, little place you can come to basically get a lowdown as to your tag. So I'm using a lot of very high competition tags. Now, this may have changed. Um, I may have once, once upon a time only had 35% high competition tags, but obviously as time goes on and people, you know, other sellers discover these keywords, obviously naturally it's gonna get more and more high competition. These are very low competition, low, medium, high. You can kind of get a, a breakdown as to, you know, what sort of tags I'm using. I'd always recommend um, trying to keep this red a little bit less than me, um, because obviously if you're a new shop, you don't wanna try and rank for, high competition keywords straight off the bat. You want to definitely mix them. Tag demand, medium, high. So I do try and keep it in, you know, also as well, a lot of these tags are probably seasonal tags. Uh, so obviously Christmas gift, they're gonna naturally be quite low at this time. Um, so try and keep some demand for your tags. Tag engagement, pretty well relatively equal very high high medium you know i would say any anything medium and above obviously high and above is better but anything medium and above um is is fab um yeah it just shows that people engage with that tag a lot more so they're hearting visiting listings shops and things like that ratings this goes through your feedback now um I I have a love-hate relationship with this because when this comes up with a, with a little asterisk or something like that, I often go, oh my goodness. But when I've gone to my Etsy shop, it, ha it hasn't reflected. So I don't know how accurate this is, nor how accurate this is. Um, this sort of gives you a nice little um, 
uh, again, really reckon of how much feedback you've got, neutral feedback, negative feedback. Um, as you can see, guys, I get negative feedbacks too. I can literally tell you, um, I, I remember every single negative feedback, like it's ingrained into my mind, but I've learned from them. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something that it is, it's a thing that I think a lot of Etsy shops don't want to kind of dive into and really analyze their negative feedback. They just want to forget about it and move on and, that, and that's okay. But it's a really good opportunity to learn from your feedback and essentially, you know, develop and better your shop. Because if people are making comments on the transaction, you know, take it into consideration. So for example, I've got a, a few negatives here. I've already been through these. Um, what I do is that if I've missed one, I go through and I respond publicly. I reach out to the customer one more time. So previously, I always reach out to a customer three times to say, look, now I really want to help you. Um, you know, I've refunded before and then they've kept the item. I've replaced before, even when it's three months over the you know the date that I would usually do so I do I bend over backwards for my customers because at the end of the day they they are what keeps me in business and I love getting messages from customers that go oh thank you so much your customer service service is amazing and also it just retains them rather than them going away with a, with a bit of a bitter taste in their mouth if if you've you know begrudgingly refunded half for a broken item, it, it, it leaves a bad taste. They, they, they'll probably never come back to you again. Whereas if I you know, over deliver on the customer service front, they, they come away thinking, oh, do you know what? I know that shop has my back and I know if anything goes wrong with that shop again, um, I know they'll always have my back. So compare listings. Um, I haven't used this, I think this is relatively new. But what you can do is you can um, take this little number here and you can go pop one in there, pop one in there, pop one in there and compare it side by side. So it's quite handy. Um, I, I don't tend to use that sort of tool very much. Well, I've never used this, but I don't sort of use it myself. But what I do do is I tend to like use a split screen. So I'll drag this, win this window here, drag on another window there and I'll sort of be able to be active on both. So, but another little handy dandy little tool. And profile. This sort of goes through your profile page. So it gives you a nice little, your about page is active, shop title, announcement story, story headline. Make, basically, it just makes sure that it gives you really sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Really handy suggestions to make sure that your Etsy profile is complete because they do say that you, if your, your about section needs to be complete, um, and they will give you a slight boost in ranking. So again, amazing. I haven't added my blog in there, see? So it's got a big red cross saying, hey, you know, you could be driving traffic to your blog. Why not add it in there? So that's what I will do when I get off of this. <laughs> Top sellers. So this is, oh, this is, this, this is, a, this is ugh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. This is the place that you, that I come to dream if I'm having a particularly bad day and I'm like, oh, is Etsy dying? You know, I'm just not getting sales on Etsy and all this sort of stuff. This is the place I come when I'm like, I'm needing some encouragement. Because for example, those of you out there that sell, let's say, um, pet supplies, you can see all of the top shops and you can select it by country, you can uh, do it by category, you can do it by where the shop is open. So you can compare um, shops, sh shops in your country that open the same time as you and see where you are in the list and also just sort of get an idea as to, you know, who they are, what they're doing better than you, you know. It's, don't, don't think of it as a comparison and a, neg a negative, turn it round, think, wow, so, if I put a little bit more effort in, I know that all these guys here are selling pet supplies and that's what I sell too. So I know for a fact that, that I could definitely do this, you know? And obviously this is their links here, so you can go onto that there. So if I go onto the jewelry, see, you, I, I, can, I can see here that, you know, there's so many different shops that I can look at and think, okay, I know that, you know, these, these guys, are doing well and so can I. So if I wanna go onto UK shops, here we go. Lots of jewelry sellers that, yeah, 
I assume this is jewellery. Uh, let's go back onto jewellery again. No, it wasn't jewellery. But you can see that, like, in the UK, that I can narrow it down by, you know, all these guys here. And I love it. There I am. <laughs> 47. That's not bad. I'm, I'm not even mad. So, yeah. That is... I, I do like this tab. It can be a little tricky to not start comparing and start getting down on yourself and that's not what this is about at all but yeah I just I just think it's a really fantastic uh thing to use if you're feeling a little bit negative about Etsy and you're sat and you're saying oh well that's that's it now Etsy's too saturated it's dying it's this it's that well no you can come onto here and see actually there's there's a lot of shops out there maybe you just need to tweak a few little things so again, this is a competition tab here. You can go onto sales. I'm just gonna have a little sip of my, of my coffee. Sorry guys, I just had to pause because uh, my uh, drop and go account needed some more money putting on it. Anyway, so we are here now on the competition uh, tab. And as you can see, I've tracked uh, 42 shops that um, I want to sort of keep an eye on and just sort of see, oh, how are these guys doing? To be honest, I don't use this as like to track competition anymore. It's more of like maybe people that I know that I think, oh, I just want to see how they're doing. And, you know, and it, yeah, I, I don't really use this as competition, but by all means, you, you know, it's a really useful tool to do that. Um, but it's just, it's nice to kind of see where you sit. It tells you every day how many sales these guys have had. Now, this these I have found in the past that these are not accurate because when I've gone onto my own, it might say well, one or two sales. When I'm looking at my dashboard, and I've had like eight or nine. So I'm not really sure how you know the algorithm is on this sort of thing. But it's relatively you know it's it's, it's a nice little. It gives you an idea, let's say. Um, so again, you know, if 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 you were a, supply shop let's say and you wanted to go on here and go okay well they're having sales okay well I'll go onto their shop and I'll see maybe what they're doing that is better than what I'm doing all that type of thing um I I don't really use this tab a lot anymore it's more like I said a, of a place where I like to you know have a little look on Etsy shops that maybe I've critiqued or something like that and I want to sort of see okay I want to I want to see how they're developing over time and you know I do sometimes reach out and go oh well, well done you know I can see that you're making sales that's amazing so I use it in a completely different way to what you guys would but yeah it's handy dandy nevertheless social this compares your um competitors are you going to load there we go competitors social media so you know you, you can kind of get an idea of how many etsy hearts or i.e uh i think this is listing hearts or hearts on their profile i'm not sure pinterest followers pinterest pins twitter followers twitter tweets all that kind of thing so i mean again i do sort of tend to come on here and go oh, okay may, may, maybe i should be doing more on uh twitter or have more tweets or something like that and, all, and also it's quite good to see um, you know, you can kind of have a correlation, if you like, as to how, okay, so these, these have got 754 tweets, they've got 2,828 followers. Um, you can see a correlation, if you like, you know, between how many tweets you put out and how many Twitter followers, and the same with pins and things like that. Listings. So you can go through here, I'm just gonna select just a random one, maybe that one. I don't even know what this shop is, to be honest and you can analyze the oh here we go oh, what's a jewelry shop oh there we go fantastic so you can analyze um yeah their listings you can see sort of what um tags they're using what their titles are like all that kind of thing really so again really really handy um you can at a glance see the tags i wouldn't necessarily recommend like just literally copying your competitors tags and their title i mean I don't even think that's allowed anyway, but I, I just, I, I wouldn't because what's working for their shop is completely different to what will work for your shop. So if I click on the uh, competitors tab and tags here, wait for it to load. Um, 
So you can do the same again. So I am gonna go on to the same one. There we go. Click on that. And it gives you a lowdown on their tag. So if you remember, I showed you, um, you know, what, what my tags were. So they've got a similar sort of tag com competition wheel here, tag demand wheel here, tag engagement. They've got a lot more uh, very high engagement. So I'd be looking at mine and I'd be thinking, okay, that's what they're doing differently. They are using very high engagement tags at all times um, or, or high engagement tags. So yeah, immediately I can go, ah, okay, that, that may be where I'm going wrong. So when I'm going back and doing my listings, I can go, right, I need, need to, need to, need to make sure that my tag engagement score on the keyword uh, tool that I'm gonna show you in a, li a little while um, is very high, okay? So we're on to tools now, keyword explorer. Um, let's do Sagittarius necklace, go on. Let's do that. Here we go. So it sort of gives you a, a nice little lowdown as to, yeah, basically all these nice little graphs here. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So Etsy searches an estimated av average monthly the search volume over the last 12 months. That gives you a nice little num number here. Etsy competition, an estimated, Estimated number of Etsy listings that could be found when searching for the keyword. Etsy engagement, low. Etsy engagement is a relative measure of how much Etsy buyers engage with results. EMHank uses views and favorites data from Etsy to, to determine engagement. The higher the engagement, the more likely products are to be viewed, favorite, favorited, and purchased. So that gives you a nice little low down there. Long tail graph. Um, you can see here that the longer tail keywords you have, i.e., like this, these here are long tail keywords where they have a few words in at a time as a phrase, um, they convert more. Basically what that means is that how I view this is if you're just typing in, if you're a shopper typing in necklace, okay, you're gonna be met with millions of search results. Then as a shopper, I narrow it down to zodiac necklace Again, I get all the 12 uh, zodiac signs come back, it's not what I want. If I type in Sag Sagittarius zodiac necklace, then I start to narrow it down to my birth month, but I want it in silver. So then I type in Sagittarius zodiac necklace silver. That is a long tail keyword phrase, which converts higher because that's what the customer is actually looking for. I hope that makes sense. I can do a video on this separately, I, I can do, illustrations and things like that just to help you guys out a little bit but yeah it, it again it gives you a mighty handy i mean these are month month by month uh, search trends and things like that google versus etsy they tend to follow along each other so usually things that are popular on google at some point or around about the same sort of values will be popular on sorry guys i just had to sneeze i didn't want to deafen the earphone users um will be popular on um etsy so yeah, it also gives you related searches. So again, it's got Sagittarius necklace sterling, uh, vintage Sagittarius necklace sterling. It gives you the, the total searches and uh, keyword engagement here. So if I had this necklace, I'd be looking at this uh, tag here or key keywords here. It also gives you a tra uh, beware of trademarked items. Um, I can do a video on trademarked items, but guys, really 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 be careful with trademarking i know so many shops that have been that have uh, had a strike against their shop because they are using uh, trademark terms even things that you wouldn't think of so for example um if you're making bags and you say Vel velcro bag velcro is actually a trademark term so just don't use it. Um, you have to be really, really careful. You guys out there, just make sure that you research it a lot beforehand. They give you a nice little link here too. Um, I think that's just the USA database maybe, but if you guys are in the UK, just make sure that you really, really double check it. And don't use any like obviously, you know, trademarked items as well. Bulk keyword tool. 
Um, you can enter up to 20 search terms and basically look up the estimated search volumes and trends for both Etsy and Google, 20 words at a time. So yeah, I don't really use that that much, nor do I use a bulk rank checker because I like to be, I like to get in deep with the individual keyword really. Rank checker, this is really useful, really, really useful. So with Etsy, um, it changed, I believe, last year. I think it was the beginning of last year I saw a definite, um, and I'm sure you guys have as well, a definite downturn in views and sales. Now, what I think it is, and I've contacted Etsy and things like that, um, from what I can fathom, uh, Etsy used to, so if someone, no matter where they were in the globe, typed in Sagittarius necklace, for example, um, they would all get the same set of search results. And I used to be ranked number one, number two, but pages rather, so page one or page two, for most of the terms I was aiming for in that particular listing. But what happened is, because Etsy is a very USA-based uh, platform, let's say, what happened was that they started showing um, search results based on where the searcher was. So they would have that they would have this search here. They would click and enter, and they would be shown. So let's say if they, if they were in Mississippi, they would be shown search results from in their state or around the state, or even just in the USA as a whole. Um, my little UK listings were pushed down in the search. And I think a lot of you UK users out there might have found the same thing. And I did do Etsy searches and things, and yeah, that is basically what happens. So if you guys are out, are out there and you're saying, oh, Steph, I had the same, you know, sort of spring last year, it was sort of between uh, March, April, May last year it begun. Um, and yeah, basically I've managed to claw a lot of it back uh, by using other tactics and things like that. But yeah, it, it's, it's, I know why they, you, why they changed it because they want to increase the conversion rate because they don't want to be showing people, you know, if I'm in the UK and I need a gift quickly and I'm being shown something that's being sent from Canada, let's say, you know, it's going to take a couple, a good, good couple of weeks to get to me. Um, whereas if they show me a listing again from the UK, it increases the conversion rate because I can see that it's going to be here relatively quickly and I'm just going to go in and buy it. So I don't know what they're doing about that now. I think it's here to stay, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, again, I can do a video on this before, but what this little tool before, I can do a video on this at some point. I need to stop uh, getting ahead of myself. <laughs> So this little rank checker here basically shows you where your, uh, where, what, what the average Etsy member sees in search results on Etsy.com without the personal, personalization or ads. So if I go on, if I get rid of that and I do that search, Sagittarius necklace, it will show me sort of shops that are ranking if it loads. <coughs> I don't think it's going to do it, is it? Da, 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 da. So it gives it gives me all of the so it gives me the search results without only showing me UK results because I'm based in the UK. So on page two, rank six. Yeah, these are all my listings actually. So what what it does is it shows you where your listings rank, and then it also shows you the top listings here. This is where I have seen such a mishmash of. Um, shorter titles versus longer titles. Here, rank one, page one, long, long title. Same with the second. Uh, this is like a intermediate, long, long, long. And then you just have like a really short title here. Long, short, long, well, short, I'd say, medium, long, long. So I don't know what's going on with the titles, guys, but definitely, definitely, definitely test it with your shop. That's all I would say. Um, so yeah. This is a mighty handy uh, little tool here, you monitor. You can monitor keywords. Um, I actually haven't done this, which I wish I had done, but say if I wanted to do a silver elephant necklace, I need to, there we go, save keywords. 
These will be monitored daily. Any listings we find for new keywords you just added will start to appear tomorrow. So unfortunately, I can't show you this, guys. Um, but yeah, another really fantastic tool just to keep a little BDI on the keywords that you're ranking for. Spell checker. I think I showed you this before. Yeah, so basically just go through and make sure that you're using uh, your tags spelt correctly. This little keyword tool, this is the thing I use every single day and I'm really excited to show you. So, have this nice little, you know, uh, ex explanation here. So if you get a bit lost, you've got all this right up here. However, if I type in Sagittarius necklace, I type in search, and I'm, so let's imagine that I've made a Sagittarius necklace, I'm, lo I'm looking to list it and I'm looking to find some keywords. So, I mean, straight off the bat, this is a really good tag because, or a, a, when I say tag, guys, I mean either you can use it in the tags or as a phrase in your title. I just call them tags, so I hope that clears things up. Sagittarius and necklace. So, Etsy search is 1,469 per month. There's only 3,717 listings, medium engagement. So I would be using this tag because at the end of the day, there's, a, there's the half the amount of listings there are, well, just under half the amount of listings there are people are searching for. Also gives you a little uh, insight here, average average weekly views, average daily views, da, 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 da. average price, that's, that's handy, although it is in dollars, but you can kind of get an, an idea. Trends, nice little popular tags here. This is what I use, this little section here. Now, as I said to you before, when I do a listing, I I go back into my stats and I look at like similar items that I, or, or I already have and I use keywords that have worked well for me in the past for my shop. I then go in here and I mix it with keywords that I'm finding that have low competition. So I've just sorted that by low. So at the minute there's just nothing. So just skip all of this gump I would, unless you see something and you go, ah, okay. But they're very, as you can see, very specific searches so competition no basically i'm looking for etsy searches so for example this keyword here i'd actually use this if i was selling a big dipper necklace which i'm not i know but i would use this term because it's got 247 uh, competitors but 150 people are searching and it's a medium engagement so it's an up and coming keyword so yeah i would i would put i'd be experimenting with this one um this, for example, it's a very low engagement, so I would probably think twice. Anything medium and above, I would. But again, this one here I'd be looking at, um, keep scrolling down, I'm looking at this thing here, this, this little column here. Sagittarius charm, very low, probably wouldn't touch that. Sagittarius necklace, again, yes, I'd definitely be using that one. I would, uh, obviously Libra, it's not Libra, Virgo, Aries, Scorpio, Gemini, it's not anything to do with me, Sagittarius sign. I'd be using, I wouldn't be using this one. I might, I might use this one because I'm getting a bit stuck for terms now. So I might be using this one, but I'd experiment, give it a go. Um, that one I'd be using. I know there's not a lot of searches and quite a lot of competition, but um, I would definitely be running out of searches by this point. Um, when I've done, uh, when I've actually made a Sagittarius necklace and made a listing before, I've always struggled. So I particularly picked a difficult one, um, but you guys would, would have a lot more of an easier job doing this, I would imagine, with your tags. Uh, I'd be using this one too. I know it's low, but again, I'm sort of running out of keywords. Um, da -da -da -da, competition. That one, I mean, obviously I'd be putting that one in because it's just Sagittarius, so that would be in my uh, phrases anyway. Zodiac sign necklace, maybe. Astrology necklace, this is what I would use because look, see, 500, uh, between 500 and 750, 15,220 competitors using that tag um, and a high amount of engagement. So I would be using that tag. Um, and then what I would do is that with this listing, I've got a definite mix of tags. So I would list it with the keywords I've just showed you. I would then leave it for at least 30 days and then I'd go back into the stats and see what keywords um, have brought traffic to that listing and converted it for me. So you can see it's a definite step-by-step -step process. SEO is never something that you sort of do it and then leave it. It's always something that you have to be tweaking and experimenting with, which I know is a pain in the, in the bum. I know it is. And I, I know that you know we will have better things to do. Um, but it would definitely benefit you guys to learn about it. Um, and yeah, I would I would maybe 
do like a time bracket and put it, put aside maybe an hour or two a week to go in and attack your expired listings first maybe and over time you would definitely 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 see an upturn in views because you're actively working on your shop and your seo all the time uh, compare keywords again that is something that you can pop uh, different keywords in and get this nice little graph here uh, Christmas roof, dog bed, silver ring, Halloween wreath. You know, you, you can compare them. So if you're not sure about a few keywords you, and you, you know, you want to keep your title relatively short, but you have two keywords that you're not sure on, you can do a really good visual uh, representation of them side by side. Category tool. Um, let's do the Sagittarius necklace again. Look up. Da, 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 da. I remember this being very handy actually. This gives you the, uh, if I can remember rightly, it gi yeah, so it gives you the best categories for your uh, items. So for jewellery, and if any other jewellery sellers out there are watching, do you guys find this really weird? Necklace pendants, necklaces, charm necklaces. It's, I, I, I struggle with this because it's, it's like, it's literally 39%, 37%. Half my shop is in this category and half my shop is in this category. I mean, obviously, if they're not bracelets and rings and things like that. I find it really, really hard. I haven't seen an upturn in one category versus another. It's just one of those little quirks, I think. Um, yeah, I I type my item in. So, you know, when you're listing an item, when you get that little Etsy finds the category that it fits best in. I'm just going to have a little sip of my coffee, which has now gone cold. <laughs> um, they suggest to you a category. I tend to just whack it in that one because if Etsy are telling me that's the one they want it in, I'm gonna pop that in. But I, I used to always list my necklaces in this and I, I used to get more sales in this category, but then I'm thinking to myself, is that because of the category or the other changes that they've made? It's always really, really hard. Color thesaurus, I haven't used this. Um, okay, let's go for a nice hot pink. Oh, look at this, oh. You guys out there that are redoing your brand are going to love this. Amazing. So it gives you the hex codes for all the different, so if you're making a brand, and uh, I'll do a video on this uh, soon about branding and just, you know, how to do it in a, in a, in a cheap, cheapy way. Uh, well, not cheapy ways, in, in a bad way. Uh, what's, what's in, if you're doing it on a budget, let's say. Um, you can come in here and get the hex codes. You can pick, you know, you have all the all the pinks and maybe sort of purple side, side by side and you can get a really good idea of what hex codes you want to use. Would be really hard to only pick like one color out of this lot though, wouldn't it? <laughs> this mighty handy little tool is like an Etsy fee um, calculator. So if I sell something for 19.95, Shipping price, uh, £2.10. Coupon discount, 10%. Calculate. Oh, it also says so labour cost, let's say, I don't know, I'm just going to keep this really easy. Material cost, a pound. Shipping cost, £2.10. Promoted listings, uh, I don't know, let's just do 50p just for the sake of it. Renewing, 20 it gives you total cost for dollars. It is, it is done in dollars, so that's the only downside, but you can sort of, you know, do it in pounds as well. It, numbers are the same. <laughs> After discount, 20 uh, pounds and 5p. Uh, so basically it gives you your estimated profit. So it gives you your transaction fee, payment processing fee. So it's really, really good to see about your pricing. I forgot about this tool and I'm glad I've rediscovered it because it'll be mighty handy. I've actually, <laughs> I've actually gone and made a spreadsheet um, that does exactly this because I wanted something like this. Little did I know the E rank already had my back. So yeah, wasted about two hours of my life, but never mind, never mind. Calendar, I think this is the, yep, yeah, we've already been over this one. Hashtag generator. Ooh, I haven't used this one before. I think a lot of these tools are new. Um, enter terms below, uh, Sagittarius. That's, that's not how you spell it. Let's do it, there we go. Convert to hashtags. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so, oh, right, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't use this that, that much. Gift for dad, into hashtags like gift for dad. So you could like copy and paste your, uh, your tags, I suppose, in here. So if you've got, 
like a, a notepad full of, full of tags and you don't want to and you can't be bothered to go through and take the spaces out and put the hashtags in you can copy and paste them in there so yeah probably quite a handy tool then right we're on the home stretch guys sales reports Sorry, guys, I just had to pause uh, ever, ever so quickly. The doorbell rang. <laughs> um, the sales report, uh, I'm not going to show you that just because that's got all of my... I didn't realise like quite how much of sensitive information is on there. Um, so I won't show you that one just because it's got all sorts of things on there that I probably shouldn't be splattering over the internet. But that is a really fantastic little ready reckoner, if you like, of yeah, all your sales reports and things like that. Um, sales map, handy, because Etsy doesn't actually do this anymore. Um, they used to give you like a nice little map and see where your sales are coming from. This is really useful because it sort of gives you an idea of, okay, do I need to tap into Canada more, the, the USA as a whole more, the UK more? So see, most of my sales come from, um, ooh, come from the UK, they come from the USA. Yeah, it just gives you a really, really good idea. Delivery status, what's this over here? Okay, um, so I think this is if you're using Etsy shipments and things like that. Um, yeah, I think it just basically gives you the delivery status of all your shipments if you're putting uh, tracking numbers and things in, in, like that in it. Um, I don't put tracking numbers in my shipment straight off the bat. Um, I used to, and it used to take me literally about an hour and a half every time I came back from the post office to sit there and do that. So I I don't use, um, what's the one? What's the Royal Mail one where it goes to a thing and then it automatically uploads it? I use Drop drop and Go um, because I can literally just drop my post off in the mornings, don't have to worry about it. Um, I can't think, do you know what? I can't think what it's called. It's really going to bug me. I'll have, have a think about it. Market report. Uh, okay, so it gives you year-on-year -year reach and things like that. Oh, let's pop that down now. Yeah. Mm. It gives you, ah, so it shows you 57% of users are in the United States. So when I said that Etsy is quite a, a USA-based um, uh, website, it, it is. Um, so you UK people out there, um, this can be quite depressing to look at because you're thinking, well, if Etsy are only showing me people from the UK and vice versa with people who are searching for my items, then what chance have I got? Well, I know for a fact that they are putting so much money into doing UK-based advertising to get people onto Etsy. Guys, hand on heart, I predict that in five years time, this number is going to at least double because I really do feel like there is a lot more UK people knowing about Etsy now, shopping on Etsy now, and the customer base, uh, the customer, the customer base will just get bigger and just expand. Market comparison. Um, this, this, this looks all just a bit too hot and heavy for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a numbers girl, but here they are if you want to have a good little look trending this is a handy one top 10 etsy search terms and i'm a pin girls easter dress uh, oh in march this was uh okay it's no longer maintained so if you go onto this website here uh, okay I, I don't actually know what my part hang on let me just see if i can guess it I'm not a robot. Oh, for goodness sake. Don't, that doesn't, it's just infuriate you. Is that a chimney? I haven't even got my glasses on. How am I supposed to see if it's a chimney? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry guys, I, I don't remember what my password is. It's auto saved when I go on to uh, my little bookmark tab thing, but apologies for that. But yeah, you can essentially go onto their website and you can see what's trending, which is really, really handy. So they've got also what was trending last year. So you can get a really good idea about that. Social report. This is the last little bit I'm going to do, guys. Um, favorite your Etsy shop. So it just basically goes through and shows you what your social medias are looking like and your links as well. So just in case you want to just copy and paste it. 
So let's get back under dashboard. Uh, we've, we've done all of these, haven't we? The SEO grades, which is this little bit here. I did briefly talk about that. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about SEO grades myself. Um, I know they're probably handy to kind of see, but at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't be changing these because I know that they work for me. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not converting very well, but uh, just because of the fact that there's not a lot of 13th birthdays, I don't think around. I think I might have been a little bit too specific when it came to these cards, but never mind. Um, so, for example, da -da -da -da. I mean, let's have a little look. Let's find something that's converting well. This, for example, so this one here, I I wouldn't. This is this is an E. I wouldn't be changing this because the conversion rate is doing really really well. With the visibility score is good. I wouldn't be touching this. So the, the, this is an example as to where, you know, the SEO grades might not. You know, your own knowledge of your listings and your shop always trumps it. Is essentially what I would like to say. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this really, really in-depth review of Etsy rank slash e-rank. Um, I would always recommend you guys try out the free version first. Uh, it doesn't have as much as what I've showed you today, but it does have a good amount of handy tools. It's only, I think, what do we work it out to be? Seven pounds something every month. I would recommend it just for the insights and the extra tools alone. The keyword tool is just amazing and all the other bits and bobs that I've showed you, not that I necessarily use, but you might, are just added bonuses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them below. Um, I, lo I love you all so, so much and I will see you soon. Bye.